What's up guys, this is For the Love of Insects with a new video on keeping snakes. This is the first video I made in a very long time. Um, I apologize for the wait um, with making videos, but I've actually found some time where I can make a good video. So this is kind of a remake of an old video I made a while back about keeping water snakes. I did a lot of things wrong at the time, so I thought I would make a remake of that video and show you guys what I'm doing now. So. Uh, and show you guys like what you can do to keep your snake. So enjoy the video guys. Alright guys, this is the Diamondback Water Snake. This is a juvenile, um, so it's not very big right now. These do get to be about 6 feet in length though, which is very big. Uh, this is commonly mistaken for the Diamondback Rattlesnake, just because of the markings, so it is killed by a lot of people out of fear. Which is kind of sad, uh, because this snake is truly a beautiful creature. Um, that never really deserve to be killed, um, but these are at least concerned, so uh, basically that means that their population is very high. Um, we have an abundance of them, which means I was able to keep this, because this is a wild-caught snake. Uh, there's a lot of controversy over keeping wild-caught snakes, um, but you know, um, I, I, do like, I do like the whole concept of keeping wild-caught if it is necessary to save a population or... Um, if uh, you don't have to worry about the snake being in bad health, um, having diseases or anything. Um, so it's kind of your opinion um, that defines if you want to keep wild caught or not. But you can do some research um, and decide if it's your thing. Uh, but it certainly is my thing. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Alright guys, this is where I am currently housing this snake. This is a 10 gallon uh, terrarium that I am keeping this in. Some people say... Uh, that you need a bigger terrarium. Um, honestly, you don't really, especially for the size that the snake currently is. Um, eventually, when this gets bigger, this this species of uh, snake, the diamondback water snake, actually gets to be about six feet, um, which can be really big for most snakes. Um, so obviously, this little 10 gallon tank is not gonna work very long. Um, so eventually, I'm gonna wanna upgrade and get something way bigger. Um, that's actually going to be able to fit this snake. Um, but so yeah, this is where I currently have it. Depending on the size of your snake, um, you may want something a little bigger. I probably wouldn't go smaller than a 10 gallon to be honest though. Uh, some people keep them in like really small containers. Um, I'd say just do your own research honestly. Uh, just figure out what you think would be best uh, for your snake. Because honestly I feel like this works best for my snake. Um, if y'all feel it's too small, just tell me in the comments. Uh, tell me what you think it should be so we can all kind of know what your view is. Uh, maybe there's something I'm missing too. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of what I suggest to house it in though. This is my opinion. <laughs> Alright guys, so now I'm going to go into detail about what things that you specifically need uh, for your snake. So I'm going to talk about the enclosure. I said 10 gallon, so... Uh, but as far as other things outside of the enclosure, what you're going to want is a heat pad um, or a heat mat, whatever you want to call it. You can see I have one under here right now. Uh, that's what this cord is. This one is fairly small. I can't remember the exact dimensions on this. I don't want to lift the whole cage up or try to tear it off right now. Um, but it does cover about, a th I want to say a third of it, um, a third of the tank lengthwise. Um, and then uh, it doesn't cover this whole whole width, um, but it's right under this hide. So this hide right here, it goes a ways down. It gets, I want to say, around 85 degrees probably down there with that heat pad. Um, it isn't directly on the heat pad because I didn't want it to be. Otherwise, you have to worry about if there is a malfunction with it, um, possibly burning your snake. Uh, so I do keep the substrate a little bit above the heat pad where that uh, um, where the snake sits on. Um, because I don't want him to burn himself accidentally, or herself. Um, so, as you can see, uh, for substrate, I'm using coconut fiber. Uh, this is a really good substrate, for I'd say, for almost anything. Um, some people like to use other things like sand, uh, aspen. Uh, there's a lot of other things people use. I honestly prefer coconut fiber, because then you don't have to worry about impaction. Alright guys, next thing I'm going to be discussing is heating. Um, so right here I have a heat pad or heat mat that is um, under the tank. Uh, this is fairly small. It only takes up about one third of the size of the tank. So this is kind of the heated area. This is the cooler area. Um, so this, I actually have it right under this hide. Um, 
one thing you want to keep in mind with heat pads every once in a while they will malfunction uh, they can get too hot so it's good to have a decent amount of substrate between the heat mat and your animal so i prefer to have my uh my burrows not go all the way down to the bottom where it can be like right up against that glass where that heat mat is otherwise it can burn itself if there is a malfunction um, so you do want to make sure you do have spacing between um, uh, where your snake actually is or any animal you're keeping really in the heat mat um, so yeah just make sure you have that spacing um, but definitely you do need a heat mat uh, just to make sure your snake is comfortable this will actually help with uh, when you raise that heat too it'll help keep the um, uh, the humidity higher in the tank uh, because that is one thing that's so hard to keep up or at least I struggle with it where I live uh, keeping it the right humidity you can already see right now I'm at about 35 percent or so uh, not quite where I want it to be right now but um, with a quick spray that should rise quite a bit um, I'll get into that later in the video though alright guys the next thing I wanted to talk about is your heat lamp uh, this is a heat lamp, I believe it's UVA light, um, excuse me, that this uh, uses. Um, but this is the one thing, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier in the video or not, that you are going to need uh, two lamps actually. Right now we just have one, that's because I'm in the process of getting another one, I just do not have it yet. Um, so this one's the main heat lamp, the other one's going to be a UVB light. I believe I said that right, sorry, guys just correct me in the comments if I mix this up. Um, but the UVB um, basically acts as a, uh, it will help their immune system, it'll basically um, strengthen your uh, um, your snake a lot as far as like health. Um, so make sure you do not just have the heat lamp, make sure you have both of the lamps, there's UVA and UVB. Um, right now I do just have the UVA, actually the UVB is kind of unnecessary. Um, this is what they say it can survive with just the UVB, but you or with just the UVA, uh, but you do want the UVB as well just to improve the health. Um, so with that said, next I'm going to move on to uh, what you want to do as far as water for your water snake. Alrighty, guys. So as you can see here, I am just using a large Tupperware like plastic container. Um, so. With water snakes, the main thing you want um, is a large space where they can kind of swim around. Uh, you can see that this is really dirty right now, and I apologize for that. I was trying to get my snake out earlier, uh, and uh, she just got dirt everywhere, um, or that, <laughs> that coconut fiber everywhere. Um, and so I have to clean that out, but she got it all over in her water dish. Um, so basically, this water dish actually is about, it goes about to the bottom of this. Um, so it gives her a lot of space to swim around in there. Uh, this is actually where they be, um, or where they will be catching their food. Um, so when it comes to feeding, that is a completely separate thing. Um, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. So uh, yeah, just so make sure you have a water dish in here um, that they can fully submerge themselves in if they are a water snake. Um, if they're not a water snake, you don't as much have to worry about it. But they do definitely need a water dish. Um, also, make sure that your water does not have any chemicals in it. This can be bad for your snake or any reptile um, for that. But So just make sure you're using either purified water, or not purified, I'm sorry. Um, you can use like filtered water. I don't know if purified water really does the same thing or not. Um, so go ahead, do your own research, figure that out. Um, but you can also get uh, these little, if you go to like a fish store, um, they have these little conditioners that condition your water and neutralize the chemicals in it. Um, and they make it basically kind of like filtered water where it's not going to affect your animal. Um, so definitely look into one of those, um, into buying one of those for your animal um, so you don't have to worry about those chemicals affecting your animal long term. Alright guys, next thing I'm going to be talking about is feeding your animal. Um, so the one thing that sucks about water snakes is they take weird food. They take fish, which is kind of unusual um, for most uh, for most reptiles. So you do have to worry about going to the pet store getting feeder fish. Um, I've been told that goldfish are toxic to uh, to uh, reptiles, um, which I was unaware of. Um, I really didn't know anything about that. So I'm sorry. In one of my past videos, I recommended feeding them goldfish um that was a mistake i made uh 
But uh, if you want to do a little more research yourself um, on that, uh, minnows work really good. Sometimes at the pet store you'll see like rosy red minnows. Um, those are good feeder fish. Uh, just make sure your fish will, or not your fish, I'm sorry, your snake <laughs> will be able to uh, swallow those minnows. Um, so when it comes to feeding, uh, obviously you can feed them in a more natural way where you put the fish in the water. Um, which is a very good idea, honestly, for me. I, I like the more natural standpoint, especially if your snake is wild caught. Um, you're probably going to want it feel want to feed it a little more naturally. Um, you can also take your fish, put it on the end of like tweezers. Uh, if you get some really long tweezers, you can do it by hand. Um, but if you like, um, use your tweezers and position the fish right above the head of the, um, the snake and let the snake lick it so it can basically get a taste, get a smell of uh, um, that it really is fish. Um, usually they will eat that way. Um, but if you are feeding it by hand, you do have to worry about sometimes the snake missing and can bite your hand. Uh, but really that doesn't hurt too bad. The one thing with this, uh, this specific species of the uh, diamondback water snake, it can be a little tricky um, because these snakes actually have sharp teeth uh, that's used to grab onto the fish while they're underwater, um, which is another reason that I like to feed them in the water because it's more natural. Um, but so as far as feeding your fish, uh, full grown, they eat about, uh, I want to say some people feed them six, six or so minnows. Um, and this can be like two or three times a week. So they can eat a lot. Other people feed them less. Um, I would say that it really depends on the snake, um, their appetite. I found the same thing with other reptiles, uh, especially with geckos. Sometimes they will tend to eat more. Sometimes they will tend to eat less. Um, it's kind of like with humans too. I guess we're kind of the same way. So that's something you'll have to kind of figure out. Just make sure you are not underfeeding uh, your snake because that is one big problem. Um, that with a lot of reptile keepers is underfeeding their animals. All right, guys, one thing I almost forgot to talk about is ventilation. Here I have a complete screen lid. Uh, you do not have to have a complete screen lid, but you at least need to have uh, decent ventilation. That's going to help uh, you with proper humidity, also going to help you so you're not building up way too much humidity, um, which can resolve in you end up like having mold, that kind of thing, uh, which really sucks. So uh, make sure you have proper ventilation. That's good for your snake too. Um, so next I'm going to talk about humidity, which is another really, really hard, uh, really hard thing to maintain, at least for me where I live. So uh, let's get into that. All right, guys. So uh, this is uh, my humidity gauge. This is something that you might want in your tank. This allows you to view uh, the humidity um, that you have uh, in your cage. So you can see mine's at about 36% right now. This is not where I want it to be. For water snakes, usually you want it to be around anywhere from 40 to 60. So where that okay marker is on mine, that's where you want it to be. Um, some of these, you can find them at the pet stores. They also come in kits. Um, so you can get your own little humidity gauge. Uh, this also shows uh, the uh, um, degrees in Fahrenheit, which is really useful for me too. Um, just add both of those there. Uh, so yeah, so you're going to want to maintain between 40 and 60% humidity uh, for your water snake, just in general. Uh, banded water snakes especially, they need the same exact kind of uh, humidity. So uh, that's another just very common water snake. So uh, if you're watching this video and you have one of those or have another water snake, this just the general idea is going to be 40 to 60%. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, make sure you're pick up, er, picking up a gauge um, at your local pet store or if you already have one, that's great. Just so you can keep an eye on that humidity. All right, guys, I just sprayed down my tank. That's another thing you're going to want to do around two or three times a day, depending on what climate you live in. As you can see, um, my humidity is rising quite a bit. Um, so usually this will balance about like a little over 60 before it starts dropping again, right after I spray it down. And then uh, I'll have to spray it back down once it drops below that 40. So usually I have to spray it down like three times a day, like I just said. Um, so you're going to want to uh, make sure you are keeping up on the humidity. Otherwise, when your snake sheds, you're going to have to deal with stuff like stuck shed, which is an absolute pain when it comes to uh, when it comes to keeping snakes and even other creatures like geckos, um, other reptiles. It's it's just a pain. So um, 
try to keep your humi- or your humidity um, where you want it to be. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to deal with other health issues, uh, which can be an absolute pain. So um, I think that is all I have for this video. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you like the video, uh, I would encourage you to like it. Um, if you like the channel, check out some of my other videos. I will warn you, um, this is the first video I've made in a very long time. Some of my other videos had content that wasn't exactly uh, like correct, the way I dealt with things or uh, uh, kept my animals wasn't the right way to do it. Um, at the time, I didn't know what I was doing uh, with the way I kept a lot of my animals. Um, so I would just encourage you to uh, uh, go look through some of my other videos. Uh, you can kind of see what I was doing <laughs> if you want to. Um, I appreciate uh, you viewing this video, though. Um, please uh, like, like if you want to um, and subscribe if you feel like it. And uh, I'll see you guys later.